Okay, this is a short talk for the ACSA online disaster response session. Um, I'm Brian Kepnick. I'm a research scientist at the University of Washington Institute for Protein Design. Um, I'm a trained biochemist, but I work on Foldit, which is a citizen science project where we crowdsource problems in protein modeling. Um, Foldit is not designed as a uh, disaster response um, program, but we have been using it against COVID-19 pandemic, against the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'm going to talk some about the research we do in Foldit, how we've applied it to COVID-19 um, on short notice, and um, and I'll close with some general thoughts about player engagement that might be of interest to the um, to the general community. Um, and I will hide myself for the rest of the talk. Um, so um, Foldit is a protein folding game. We have to look uh, very briefly at the the science of proteins. Um, so we'll look at uh, the coronavirus, uh, which is depicted um, on the left, and, uh, and we'll look specifically at the spike protein, which is this red uh, kind of spike that um, surrounds the coronavirus. If we zoom in on it, um, we see it looks like kind of this big chain. And this is all proteins. All proteins are, um, they start as a, a big extended chain, but they fold into very precise three-dimensional shapes. And it's the three-dimensional shape of a folded protein that gives it its function. Um, so in the spike protein, uh, what happens is it folds into this very precise shape that allows it to bind a receptor on human lung cells. This is the ACE2 protein. Um, and specifically, the shape of the coronavirus spike is complementary to this receptor, which allows it to stick to it very tightly and trigger uh, membrane fusion and, and then infection. Um, so in a very general sense, understanding how proteins fold from this extended chain into a precise shape is really important for understanding all of biology at a, at a molecular level. Um, so this is what we do with Foldit, is we, we challenge Foldit players to fold proteins. Uh, we start them with an extended chain, um, and then they fold it up into a three-dimensional fold. And we use a, um, some physics modeling to evaluate the stability of their fold. And this is the score that's reported to them. So um, if we have a bunch of folded players competing to find really stable protein folds, we know that the highest scoring folds will be the most uh, likely to accurately reflect the true structure of a protein and how it folds. Um, so at the end of the day, we get a bunch of folds, a bunch of models from folded players um, that represent uh, a different possible folds for this protein. And we know from their ranking that um, the things with the best score, the folds with the best score, are the most likely to represent the true structure of a folded protein. Um, last year, we had a, a big breakthrough in, in kind of a, a different protein folding problem, which is uh, the design of brand new proteins. So in this case, we're designing, um, uh, instead of folded players looking at a natural protein sequence and trying to predict how it will fold up, in this case, folded players are inventing their own shape, their own new fold, and then assigning a new sequence to it so that uh, their protein actually folds up. And the remarkable thing is that they do this with very high accuracy. So on the left, we have four examples um, where the folded player's model is in color and the true crystal structure that we, we solved in the lab is in gray. Um, and what we see is that they align very nicely. So the models that folded players are come up, coming up with, right? These are brand new molecules that are, they're just inventing out of thin air. Um, they actually fold up correctly in the lab. Um, and this is really exciting. This opens up the door to do um, uh, to tackle some applied problems in protein design. Um, and so when coronavirus hit and we started to get a bunch of new data about it in early 2020, we realized that this is a problem that we could tackle with Foldit. Um, and so from our first slide, we recall that the, the shape of the coronavirus spike binds to this receptor because it has a complementary shape. And this binding event is what triggers infection. So if we can block this binding event, um, then we could have a drug that might prevent infection um, of lung cells from the coronavirus. Um, so this is actually a pretty straightforward problem for us to set up and fold it. We just have to uh, provide folded players with the spike protein, the structure of the spike protein. And then we challenge folded players to design a brand new protein that has a complementary shape to the spike. And if it has a, a, a um, if the shape is good and complementary to the, the spike target, then our human protein, or sorry, our designed protein will stick to the spike tighter than the human ACE2 receptor protein, and that could block infection. Um, 
so uh, so this is um this is what we, we set out to do. So we started these puzzles in late February, and by the end of March, we had generated about a hundred folded player designs um, that we thought were worth testing in the lab to see if these protein designs actually fold up and stick to the coronavirus spike target. Um, this is definitely kind of a moonshot. This is a, a very difficult problem and it's Foldit's first attempt. But um, looking at some of these Foldit designs, they actually look very, very good compared to the, the ACE2 protein that we're trying to compete against. Um, they, have, they have very nice characteristics, which are pretty promising. Um, unfortunately, we did not find that any of these proteins did bind to the target. Um, which was a little bit of a letdown, although I will say other researchers have had some luck with this, um, which is good because it shows that this, this kind of approach, this, um, this strategy of blocking um, the, the coronavirus spike through this method is, it is effective. Um, but anyway, we, we know now that there are some tools that Foldit players will probably need to generate successful binders um, in Foldit and we've spent kind of most of the summer getting those tools into Foldit so that we can tackle more of these problems in the future. I also wanna talk some about player engagement and, and how coronavirus has played into this. Um, on here, I'm showing on the left, um, the number of new users that we get every month registered in Foldit um, over time since Foldit was launched in about 2008. Um, and then on the right is, is more what we care about is the actual participation we get. Uh, on a week-to-week -week basis, who, how many people are um, actually participating and contributing to our Foldit challenges? And so we've seen kind of a, a slow, steady decline over the years, which is um, which is not great to see. Um, but the more interesting thing I want to talk about is is the on the left we see that user registration um, it spikes, and these actually correspond to, um, to to big research advances, basically. So when Foldit players accomplish um, some big breakthrough, we, we get to publish a paper on it. Um, it sometimes get picked up by the media and, uh, and we get a lot of press and, and that leads to, um, to new uh, Foldit users. New, new people come to our website and register. Um, and we were, we were really disappointed to see that our breakthrough last year didn't really get picked up by the media and we didn't really get the, the corresponding player spike that we were hoping for. Um, so when, um, when coronavirus hit and, um, and we realized that, that, we could, uh, that we could contribute, that we had a way to, to really tackle the pandemic, um, we, tried to, um, we tried to take this opportunity um, and we, we tried something new. So working with my colleague, Ian Hayden at the Institute, he is a, um, a science writer and handles um, great for all things communication. We, um, we really doubled down on our social media and outreach efforts um, to try to promote our, um, our, our Foldit puzzles for coronavirus. Um, so we generated a bunch of YouTube videos um, explaining the science behind coronavirus and how Foldit could help. Um, lots of blog posts and engaging with, with new players as much as we could on, uh, on Twitter and Discord. Um, and, uh, and we saw that it was, it was pretty effective. We tapped into some natural excitement and engagement around an existing problem. Um, and so when uh, we saw that March um, of 2020 was our second biggest month in terms of user registration and, and all of Foldit history. Um, and even more exciting, we saw that uh, participation in our coronavirus puzzles um, kind of went through the roof. So this is really great for, for Foldit. Um, we can generate better scientific results with more players. The, the more people we have designing binders against coronavirus, uh, the better chance we have of finding an effective binder. And, and what we hope is that we can keep these players around. Of course, player retention is, uh, is a different problem. Um, and that's what I want to close with is um, kind of some big picture thinking we've, we've, been, we've been struggling with is how to retain Foldit players that, that register. How do we keep them around and keep them playing Foldit um, over an extended period of time? And for this, we look to the, um, to the video game industry, which um, has uh, done a lot of work, obviously, on player retention. Um, and there's this great talk by Chris Wilson, um, who works on a, a game called Path of Exile. Um, and you can find the link here on YouTube, but um, he talks about how uh, something they, they discovered when trying to improve player retention. And it's, it's kind of interesting. They, they saw that um, early on when they started releasing updates for their game. So these are um, periodic updates with new content. They found that uh, they got spikes of users, new users, whenever um, a new content, uh, a new update came out. But 
um, kind of regardless of the size of the update and how many features it came with, they, they kept seeing dwindling returns. So not as many people were, um, were, were coming to their new updates. Um, and then at some point they decided that they would start releasing regular updates. So uh, regardless of the size of the update, big or small, they would just every six months, they would have a new update um, and, and, and that would be new content for players. And what they saw was that they started getting uh, more consistent growth over time is that more people kept coming to their updates um, with these regular updates. And what they think is happening is that people are quitting their game with the intention of coming back because they know that six months from now there will be new content. Um, so um, this, is, this is kind of interesting. We thought we, we can't exactly do this Enfolded, unfortunately, um, we can't just uh, create new science every six months. Um, we, we kind of fold it follows the science. But what we can do is we can provide more regular updates for folded players. Um, so what we've been doing, and this is again with, with my colleague Ian Hayden, is every month we've been releasing a new short 10 minute video about the latest science and the latest research that's been going on behind the scenes for folded players. Um, and this is intended for Folded players to know that on the first of every month, there will be new content for them. Um, they can come and see what's been going on uh, in the lab, the research we've been doing, and what new challenges they can participate in in Folded. Um, even if those are kind of the same challenges as the previous month, um, just having this, this kind of new uh, update um, every month to engage with players, um, we think that that, that could help uh, with player retention. It is, a little early, we can't say whether or not this has actually helped with player intention, uh, player retention, but it has definitely helped with player engagement. Um, we see that these videos spark a ton of new discussions on our Folded forums um, and in our Discord channel, um, and we've gotten a lot of po really positive feedback. It seems the players really seem to appreciate these uh, constant updates on a regular schedule. Um, so this is definitely definitely something that I would encourage anyone to think about if you are um, if you're working on a citizen science project that requires um, long-term engagement of, of users over time. Um, so that's all I have. A, a, obviously, there's a lot of people to thank. Foldit is a, um, is a collaboration of uh, universities across the US, and, and actually we, um, we collaborate with people around the world. Um, and of course, none of it is possible without the, the Foldit players themselves, the citizen scientists. Um, unfortunately, I'm not present to take questions um, or any of that, but you can uh, please reach out to us if you have questions. This is my personal email, and then also a more general email for the Foldit team. Um, if you have questions or suggestions, also about um, about ways that we can we can improve what we do and and, uh, and and be do better citizen science, I think, which is our main goal here. Um, but thank you.